You need to come to grips about what occurred. Detectives have been grilling DeAndre Lane repeatedly for two days about the mysterious disappearance of his baby daughter, Bianca. That if you told us about a carjacking never occurred. Sorry, bro. It didn't happen. Now, cops are accusing him of murdering Bianca, and they plead with DeAndre to confess. I can't believe your car just didn't kill him. Tell them how he did it and what he did with her body. Baby girl needs to come home. She needs to be buried and have a funeral and put in peace. But DeAndre won't break. I won't talk to you no more. I don't want to talk to you. She needs to talk to you. My baby's not dead. My baby's out there. You don't put your baby in peace. No, 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 no. But they come up empty, except for a tiny spot of Bianca's blood found on her pillow and lab reports show even that paddling stick came back clean. Now, if there's this violent killing that's going on, um, you would expect to see some kind of decomposition, some kind of blood or something or other. And no blood is found in the car DeAndre says was hijacked with his little girl still strapped in her baby seat. So police have no choice but to free DeAndre after holding him for three days on an unrelated warrant. I had nothing to do with my daughter's disappearance. I would never harm my children. My children are my life. DeAndre publicly proclaims his innocence and talks to Crime Watch Daily Detroit affiliate WXYZ about the night police believe he potty trained Bianca to death. I might have popped on the butt, like, you know you're supposed to go to the potty. You popped on the butt, you know, say she goes to the potty. Okay, daddy, go to the potty. He says he used the same padded paddling stick to also discipline his other kids. It's not anything that would, like, hurt them or anything like that. It's basically just to get their attention, like, you know you're not supposed to be doing that pop. You know what I'm saying? Don't do that no more. And DeAndre accuses police of putting one and one together and getting three. They're trying to make all this stuff out to be more than what it is. I don't have belts and just, you know, I'm trying to discipline them. I don't want to hurt them in any kind of way. But DeAndre fails to change the minds of many of Bianca's relatives, who, like the police, still suspect he killed his baby daughter. Maybe he, uh, you know, was disciplining her and probably hit her too hard or something. I don't know. I hope, I really do hope that I am wrong about everything that I think about him. I really do, but honestly, I just don't, I just don't believe him. Nor does Nancy Grace when DeAndre and his attorney, Terry Johnson, go on national TV to plead their case. You're using this as an infomercial for you and for your client who no. claims he doesn't care about no. himself. Frankly, sir, no. his story we answer stinks. Those questions. It stinks to high Get heaven. Ralph it doesn't make sense, here. and he won't answer any Get specific Ralph questions. Godby. One of the few speaking out in DeAndre's defense is his eldest son, DeAndre Jr. Everybody got negative opinions, you know what I'm saying, about my dad, man. Like I said, they don't know him like I do. Ain't nobody tell me nothing about my father. He's not going to harm none of his children, especially over, over discipline, you know what I'm saying? He disciplined all of us in the right way. But then, a shocking revelation. Police say a cadaver dog has picked up the scent of human decomposition in Bianca's bedroom and on her child car seat. I believe he sat or barked or something like that. DeAndre's attorney, Terry Johnson, dismisses it, claiming it doesn't mean anything because the dog didn't find Bianca's body. And my question was, well, how do you know he didn't have to go to the bathroom? How do you know he wasn't hungry? You know, how do you know he didn't see a female dog that he was attracted to? You know, I don't know. But the cadaver dog hits provide police with enough evidence to finally arrest DeAndre Lane for allegedly beating his daughter Bianca to death. Today we are charging Mr. Lane with first degree felony murder and one count of child abuse in the first degree. At DeAndre's trial, his defense attorney, Terry Johnson, scoffs at the prosecution's case. Well, there's not a crime scene anywhere. They get their star witness who went one of the defense's star witnesses would be none other than Bianca's mother, Benica, who stands by her baby's father. When he disciplined Bianca, did, was that something that caused you to be shocked at the way he disciplined her? No. Okay. Would it be any different than any way you've disciplined her in the past? No. And Benica surprises the court when she testifies. She told police 
she didn't believe DeAndre killed their daughter. They asked me if I thought he might have had something to do with it. And you don't, do you? No, I don't. In fact, you still support DeAndre, don't you? Absolutely. And you believe that your child is alive and still missing, correct? Absolutely. My daughter's out there. She's out there. But another woman in DeAndre's life would plunge a stake through his heart for the prosecution. Who did you hear crying? Bianca. DeAndre's fiance, Angelie Lyons, gives devastating testimony about the night he is alleged to have paddled Bianca to death. Was there anything different about the crying you heard that morning? Answer, yeah, painfully crying, like she was really intensely in pain. I don't involve myself in the disciplinary action. But now, the defense is about to drop another bombshell of its own. I kind of looked again. I said, wait a minute. Next, a veteran Detroit police officer testifies that she saw Bianca still alive just eight days after she is alleged to have been murdered. That's the little girl who was in that house. And then... As we we're in the course of just speaking random, this baby comes out of the room. 